AMD's new third generation Ryzen chips as well as their new Navi GPUs are here and I thought what better way to show off their performance than in an actual PC build. Let's get to it. I want to give huge thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. If you guys care about your privacy and security every time you go online, then you should be using a VPN. Much like a firewall that protects your data on your PC, a VPN protects your data online. With NordVPN, your data gets encrypted and your location stays private so you can surf the web anonymously without worrying about anyone stealing your sensitive information. NordVPN has thousands of servers in 61 plus countries and it's available on iOS and Android so you can protect yourself online even when using your smartphone. You can stream content, download videos, and shop online without your ISPs knowing. The best part is my subscribers can get 75% off a three-year plan plus an extra free month by using the code listed on the screen. So make sure to visit nordvpn.com techsource or click the link below and start getting protected today. So this is Storm, a gaming, streaming, and productivity PC featuring the Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core processor. We also got 32 gigs of RAM in here and the RX 5700 XT, which is AMD's newest GPU based on their RDNA architecture. The 5700 XT is made to compete against the RTX 2070, while the 5700 goes head to head with the RTX 2060. You will see gaming benchmarks on all four of these cards later in this video. So I decided to go with a Stormtrooper color scheme for this build, hence the name Storm. And the purpose of this build, like I mentioned before, is for gaming, streaming, and productivity, of course. The three included intake fans provide plenty of fresh air for the GPU and practically the entire case, really. And then I added three more fans as exhaust. We have one in the rear and two more on the top. Needless to say, the PC definitely has plenty of airflow. The G-Skill Trident Z Royal Ramp Sticks adds a nice amount of bling to the build. And finally, I threw in some custom sleeve cables for the finishing touch. I wish there was a way to turn off the red Radeon logo on the side because it kind of messes with the color scheme. I mean, the red accents around the card I can deal with, but the LEDs, not so much. So the 3900X actually comes with their Wraith Prism RGB cooler. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to test it out and see how well it cools the CPU during heavy workloads and gaming. That's pretty much the only reason why I didn't install a beefier cooler. I wanna see what this thing can do. The Wraith Prism RGB cooler comes included with your third generation Ryzen 7 or higher CPU starting from the 3700X. Based on the current prices, the total cost of this build is around $2,500, give or take a few bucks, including the CD key, which you can pick up for only $15 if you buy it from yourcdkey.com. Just make sure to use my code for an extra 10% off. As always, of course, I'll drop a link to it below. All right, let's get into temps real quickly. On stock, the 3900X idles between 65 and 55 degrees. You guys can tell by the histogram that it would peak at 65 Celsius and then dip down to 55, and then it would go back up. Uh, this is with the fan profile set to normal. I did not touch any of the settings in BIOS. On load, the CPU peaks at 88 degrees and stays there consistently. And this is after two hours of nonstop rendering. I mean, the cooler does its job and keeps it from overheating, but I do recommend going with an aftermarket cooler if you plan on overclocking. Both the 5700 and XT models idle around 40 degrees and it peaks at 91 degrees while gaming for a couple hours. Even inside a case with lots of airflow, both GPUs tend to get pretty hot. Now let's get into the performance, starting with a synthetic benchmark like Heaven. We can see that the 5700 XT falls a little behind in both resolutions compared to the 2070. Same goes for the 5700. The RTX 2060 did score higher, however, it looks like the gap is much smaller in 1440p. CSGO can pretty much run on any potato, so the FPS I was getting here were really high across all the cards in both resolutions. However, the 2070 did score an average of 5 FPS more on both runs for some reason, while the 5700 XT capped at 250 it looks like. In PUBG, both AMD and Nvidia cards showed similar performance in both 1080 and 1440p, with the AMD cards edging slightly ahead by a couple FPS. Similar results for Overwatch, however the gap between the 5700 and 2600 is much wider compared to the 5700 XT and 2070. On Tom Clancy's Siege, however, both AMD cards dominated the RTX cards, showing as much as a 30 FPS difference in 1080p and 9 FPS in 1440. When it comes to Apex Legends, both cards traded blows with the RTX 2070, slightly outperforming the 5700 XT in both resolutions, while the 5700 does slightly better than the 2060. 
On Fortnite, the roles have been completely reversed with both Nvidia cards doing noticeably better than the AMD cards in both resolutions. However, the gap between the RTX 2070 and the 5700 XT seems to be bigger. Battlefield 5 seems to favor the AMD cards more on the X11 since both AMD cards do noticeably better than Nvidia. Even in 1440p, the gap remains the same. Looking at overclocking performance, we can see some really nice gains from both cards. An average of 10 FPS gain on the 5700 XT and 9 FPS on the 5700. I mean, these are extra frames for free just by increasing the memory and boost clock. So what does this all mean? Which cards perform the best? Looking at the average FPS across all four cards, we can see that the 5700 XT and RTX 2070 are pretty much neck and neck for both 1080 and 1440p gaming. However, the 5700 outperformed the RTX 2060, but only by 5% in 1080 and 1440p gaming. Between the 5700 XT and the RTX 2070, based on MSRP prices alone, the 5700 XT is clearly the obvious choice when it comes to bang for your buck, since it's $100 cheaper than the RTX 2070 and offers similar performance. You are paying only $1.90 per frame compared to $2.37 for the RTX 2070 for 1080p gaming, but then you end up paying way more for 1440p. The best bang for your buck card goes to the Radeon 5700. You are paying less per frame for both 1080 and 1440p compared to the rest of the cards on the list. Now with that said, the 5700 isn't quite ready for 1440p gaming, so I do recommend this card only for gamers who are on a budget looking to max out their games in 1080p. Also someone who has a 144Hz refresh rate monitor to take advantage of the high frames. Uh, this card not only performs better than the RTX 2060, but it offers more bang for your buck. So obviously the clear winner in the 1080p category, I would say, is the 5700. Now, if you're looking to jump into 1440p gaming, or maybe you have a really high refresh rate monitor, like 165 or higher, then the 5700 XT is the perfect card for you. It offers similar performance compared to the RTX 2070, but it costs $100 less. Of course, this is all based on MSRP pricing and performance on the reference models. Uh, prices can change and other board partners can offer different pricing for their own cards. This video is kind of just an overview to show you guys what type of performance you can expect from AMD's new cards. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll drop a link to all the parts I mentioned in this video down below, including the parts I used in the build. Consider subscribing because I have some pretty awesome builds coming up, uh, especially some budget builds from AMD as well. Thanks again so much for watching. As always, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Once again, I wanna give a huge thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to click the link below to get 75% off a three-year plan plus an extra month for free using the code TechSource.